This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Kyle Bauer is joined by Randy Gordon with the National Feed and Grain Association. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer, visiting with Randy Gordon. He's with the National Feed and Grain Association. Randy, tell us uh, who your members are. Our members, uh, Kyle, are the grain elevators, grain processors, feed manufacturers, uh, flour millers, corn millers, uh, corn processors, and the exporters that take uh, farmer's grain and turn it into food and fuel and feed. Well, and certainly uh, those people that handle those bulk commodities, um, they have certain things that uh, they have to look into that the farmer takes for granted they just happen. What are some of the things right now? Well, the uh, huge issue for a lot of us in agriculture, including the farmer community, is uh, related to trade and the importance particularly of the North American Free Trade Agreement as we see those negotiations continuing. And we've seen a tremendous increase in U.S. agricultural exports to both Canada and Mexico over the course of NAFTA's history, 23 years, about a 450 percent increase in our exports to those two countries. Uh, Mexico is our number one corn market right now. Uh, for beef, it's 27 percent. Canada and Mexico of total exports of beef and 40 percent of our uh, pork goes to those two countries. So maintaining and doing no harm to agriculture is really an important message that all of us are singing from the same song sheet from the agricultural community. Certainly your members have put in huge investment in order to handle more uh, bushels of grain uh, that the farmers are producing, but the government needs to invest in infrastructure as well. Very much so, and in our greatest need from an agricultural standpoint right now, uh, from a marketing standpoint, is our inland waterways, locks and dams, and most of those on the upper Illinois, or the Illinois River system and the upper Mississippi are well past their 50-year lifespan. We've seen increased uh, breakdowns of those locks, about a 700 percent increase over the last 10 years in unplanned stoppages because of breakdowns. Uh, so we're really hopeful as part of any infrastructure package that the administration and Congress hopefully will enact after tax reform will include some significant uh, investment in the inland waterways uh, to improve those. Uh, right now is a 50-50 cost share, so the industry pays and, and our farmer customers pay 50 percent of the cost through a barge fuel user fee, uh, and the federal government pays the other 50%, and we think that's a great example of a public-private partnership that's working, uh, but we would like to see the federal government step up, and frankly, in the White House right now, there's a little different mentality of looking at lockage fees, which we think would drive traffic off the river system, and that's, again, we, we send about 60% of our exports down the in inland waterway system, uh, corn and beans in particular, so it's very important that we maintain that and not drive those into the, the truck side or the rail side, which where we have capacity constraints. We're visiting with Randy Gordon. He's with the National Grain and Feed Association. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Folks, come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did.